Hey guys, Wolfie here, and this is a follow-up video for Ruby Volume 8, Chapters 1 and 2. And this will be emphasis on two notable pairings in the show, one of them being Bumblebee, the other being Renora. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, I think my throat's trying to bother me, so I'm going to try to make this as quick as possible. So with that, the usual disclaimer applies in this video. Any opinion in this video is my opinion, my opinion only. I'm going to be going into Renora. I'm going to be splitting them up, you know, in the sense of like, you know, who they're based off of, how their, did their views die, and why I feel this could play a big role into them not remaining canon. Now, the thing with Bumblebee, I'm going to be focusing on varying but important factors from the show. As to why I feel they, like Renora, will also not remain canon. So with that, like I said, any opinion here is by and mine alone. And <clears throat> regarding the regarding the comic, I will not refer to it because from my understanding, the comic is discontinued. And you really can't refer to the comic for a video like this. So I'm going to be as respectful as possible here. Because we all know the whole thing with Bumblebee and Renora to a lesser degree. So what I'm going to do towards the very end here is uh, reveal a potential pairing. That involves one of the main cast and a surprising candidate. And how the angsty side of things from both Bumblebee and Renora could lead into that. So, with Renora, I'm going to be focusing on Ren first and foremost. So, for Ren, he is based off the literature version of Mulan. Now, you're kind of wondering, why not Disney Mulan, Wolvie? Well, the thing here is that with literature, Mulan had a far more tragic ending than Disney Mulan. Now, what I'm going to describe is that <clears throat> something that's kind of like dark, but it's very necessary as... Let me pause. <clears throat> I was gonna. So what I'm going to describe is kind of dark, but it is necessary because of the whole muse aspect where Ren is being based off of literature Mulan. So for literature Mulan, her death, yes, I said it like that, it is Basically, a, a Chinese, the Chinese equivalent of a Japanese ritual slash, um, however you want to call it, known as seppuku. Now, basically, what seppuku is is that it's basically for those of us in the who have been in the military, it's basically death before dishonor. So, for literature Mulan, basically, she is forced into a life as a sex slave of sorts. However, she'd rather die than live that life. Now, she will have a letter in her hands. The author is a female, but somehow Milan gives the letter to her sister. Now, the intended recipient, again, the author is a female. The author gives it to Milan, but Milan gives it to her sister. Now, the sister gives it to a male who is the intended recipient. Now, we don't know anything beyond that regarding the sibling and the male recipient alongside the author. Now, we do know that, besides that, that Mulan performs the Chinese equivalent to seppuku. Now, pertaining to Ren, unfortunately, he doesn't want to live a life as a huntsman anymore. And he'd rather die than live that life. Now, he's going to have something in his possession that belongs to a female. Now, the thing here is that the original owner is a male. But somehow, some way, Ren has his hands on it. And Ren gives the item or letter or whatever to another male. Now, the male is going to give it to a female character. We simply do not know who that is in sense of the original, the original owner and the intended recipient. We do not know, but we do know that whoever gets it, the item, is going to be thinking of the male in a different way. We simply do not know 
anything else besides him, but Ren dies, you know, not too long after that. Now we're going to jump into Nora. Now the whole thing with Nora is that she is based off of the Norse god of thunder, Thor. Now the thing here is that with mythology, you know, gods and goddesses, is that they are said to be immortal. Or so one thinks. Because when it comes down to uh, deities like that, is that when, one, when people stop believing in them, they eventually die. And unfortunately, Thor is not exempt from this case. Now, basically what happens is that Thor is in some battle of sorts, and he's being struck with some format of venom that would eventually cost him his life. Now, we don't know much else about that other than that one possible side ending of this is that a major victory is obtained. So for Nora is that she is based off of Thor, so she's going to be struck with a fatal blow. Now, it comes with a major victory for Ruby and company, but at a very big price. Too big of a price. The too big of a price is Nora's life. And those two factors alone in volume eight and maybe nine is going to come down to those two dying. So that alone, alongside the events in volume eight thus far, regardless if you're a first member or not, is going to be how, become how Renora does not remain canon. Now, before I go into Bubble Bee, I just want to do, you know, a little lesson here, you know, like becoming canon and remaining canon. Now, the thing is, with becomes canon, you know, the hints are all there, very obvious, clear as day. <clears throat> now, if it were to remain canon, they have to put the work into it. Otherwise, they will eventually split. And now, we're going to jump into Blake and Yang. Now, the thing here is that my, I mean, I don't have much of an opinion on them. Other than the fact that I do feel it's very forced. Because you don't have much evidence of them becoming canon before volume 6. And this is not good if you're trying to write. Because there would have been stronger hints for them becoming canon than them not becoming canon. Now, for them to, for order for Blake and Yang to really remain canon, and this is an outside shot is that both sides really have to work at it, like, in the thorough work. However, I don't really see Yang doing that. And the whole thing with Yang, the reason why I do not think that Yang and Blake will remain canon, and Ruby's going to become a bit of a player into this one, believe it or not. But, like I say, it comes back to Volume 1. If you notice how, like, the reasons why Ruby and Yang be, wanted to become Huntresses, is that, I, and I'm going to scroll down here really quickly, we're going to go into the Volume 1 shorts. Now, we're not going to be playing these, but it kind of helps with certain aspects of how I feel about the matter. Now, we're going to, now you notice here you have the yellow trailer and you have red trailer. Now, for these two, you know, again, this is back, for, going back to Volume 1, is that regarding Ruby, and this is tied into Volume 1, Chapter 3, where she has this chit-chat with Blake, is where Ruby reveals the reason why she wanted to become a huntress, is to follow in her mother's footsteps, basically, to make the world a better place for both humans and fauns. And with Ruby's personality, she doesn't care, like, who you are, because she's still buddies with Penny, even though Penny's not human. She's she likes Blake, even though Blake is a boss. That's the type of person who Ruby is, you know. You're cool no matter what, just as long as you're a good person. That sort of thing. So she's a bit more liberal, loose in the sense of, like, like, good, like who's good, who's bad, that sort of thing. She has a bit of a better sense that way. Now, for Yang in the yellow trailer, it's like she's looking for her birth mother, Raven Branwood. Now, we do know that Raven and Yang, you know, they meet up a few times here and there throughout the show. But in Volume 8, there has yet to be any return of Raven. 
Now, for those of you who are aware of Yang, the reason why Yang, you know, wants to become a huntress is more like a for more like a a me 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 me, and for just for the just for the adventure, nothing of real importance. Be and in and, and the way you can see that's a bit more selfish, as opposed to Ruby's reasoning. Now, along the way in the show, you know, if you look at Volume One. Ruby, you know, already knowing Yang, she somehow meets Weiss and Blake. And Ruby has a bit more of an influence than the rest of the team put together. And that's just my personal opinion. Now, it is Ruby who brings, who convinces John, you know what? I got to do the right thing. I got to man up and be the leader I'm supposed to be. So the whole thing there is that, you know... Ruby has a bigger influence on people than Yang does. I mean, granted, Ruby doesn't always make the best decisions, but if you look at the beginning of Volume 8, Yang's the one who's questioning it. Now, the whole thing with Yang and the first trailer is that the whole thing with Raven. Now, in Volume 4, it was revealed to Yang by her father, Tai Yang, that Raven was the reason why Team Stark fell apart. Now, if Yang decides to become more like Raven, Yang becomes the reason why Team Ruby falls apart and, in turn, why Bumblebee does not last. Because the thing is with the ideology for Yang, it's that it's a little bit too different from Team Ruby, and it's probably more than enough for Ruby to not really want to have Yang on the same team. Because granted, they're sisters, they all eventually get over certain things, but if you look at certain ideologies that the sisters have, the, the, the differences in them may be more than enough to say, uh-uh, no more Bumblebee, because it's like, Blake, you know, somehow understood where Ruby was coming from. And in a sense, you know, Blake and Ruby, you know, like, Hey, I like this sort of thing. You know, I like the fact that you think the same way that I do. Want to make things better, although not perfect. And the thing is with Yang and her selfishness, it's probably going to bite her in the ass. Now, it's not to say that Blake is entirely innocent. Because you look at the looks she was like giving the people throughout volume 8 thus far. All she's thinking about is Yang. However, if you look at the dialogue in Volume 7, you know the whole thing with Ren and Nora mentioning about Blake and Yang, where Ren says something along the lines that one's not going to reciprocate the other's feelings. And based on that, I do not think that Blake's going to feel the same way once she re reunites with Yang. And... The whole thing with, you know, let's just say that Ren does die in this volume. And Blake gets something from Sun. Or somebody else. So she's going to be, it could be her. It could be her that, that's the recipient. But honestly, like I said, it's Yang's selfishness, you know. On top of the potential return of Yang's PTSD. And the, basically the way they handled the whole thing with Adam's death in Volume 7. Where, you know, Yang started to become more like Raven. And a little bit like Adam as well. And with... And, but you think about Blake as one of those, like... I don't want people to die un unnecessarily. And the whole thing with Ye, you know, not really agreeing with certain things, it's like, it's just the fact that somebody's good, someone's going to be putting in the, the work, but not everybody. And I don't think Yang's going to be the one that's putting in the work because, and this is, comes back to Volume 1, Chapter 3, is where Yang has a bit of a wandering eye. Is she really meant to stay faithful? Probably not. And it's kind of sad to see, you know, in that respect. With that all being said, I do think whole thing, the whole thing with Renora and Bumblebee is going to lead into Ruby becoming canon with one or two individuals. 
Either she becomes canon with Oscar, because the original owner of whatever is Oscar's, or Lancaster, which is Ruby and Sean. Now, I do feel that the hints are stronger with Lancaster than anybody else, because the hints were there since Volume 1, Chapter 2. However, it, I mean, it's anybody's guess as to who becomes canon as well as who remains canon. Now, I do feel that Rose Garden, which is Oscar Ruby, that's going to be a pairing that remains canon because they seem to get each other and share certain things in ways that other parents simply lack. And to answer the question, I've been seeing some of the comments threads where Ruby becoming the catalyst for angsty Bumblebee, that is a yes. I have to go along with that because it's like, you can't just throw away your family for a piece of ass. And Yang having a bit of a wandering eye and the potential returner for PTSD, it may not sit well with Blake. But we'll see what happens. So um, with that, I am done with this video with Wolfie here signing off. I will catch you all on the flip side.